Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to your Lunch Break Live. My name is Savannah Harinku, if you're new here, and if you're not, Thank you for coming back. Today is May the 5th. It is Cinco de Mayo, as some of us uh, refer to it. It is also Thursday. And today we're going to be talking about kind of a fun, interesting story, something a little bit different than what we have been uh, talking about in the past. Now, today I am joined by AL.com reporter Lawrence Specker. And Lawrence wrote a story yesterday that was fascinating. And if you haven't seen it, then you are in for a surprise here. There are reports that say that a cave in a cave system, I should say, in North Alabama, Alabama may have the most Native American cave art on the continent. Not only may it have the most of those drawings, it has some of the largest drawings. Now, this is fascinating. Lawrence has been reading about this, looking into these reports, and uh, kind of digesting this information to give us the, the highlights here and kind of break it down into some language that some of us who are maybe not archaeologists or anthropologists can understand. So, Lawrence, this is just fascinating. Uh, looking at these photos, we're going to pull some up. It is just so interesting to think that thousands of years ago, this art that was uh, in, again, a cave on a cave wall has been preserved for all, all this time. Yeah. And so this is, um, I want to make one thing clear up front. These are not cave paintings as such. We're all familiar with the concept of cave paintings. These are what they call mud glyphs, which means people went in to these caves and there was maybe a thin layer of mud uh, on the ceiling or on the walls and they sort of drew images into the mud um, using their finger, or in some cases they may have used tools to do it. And so these are incredibly fragile. Um, you know, if this cave had gotten too dry over the years, this, this, this layer of clay or whatever might have just crumbled away into dust. So um, it's, it's quite remarkable that it exists at all. Well, in the conditions that you talk about, this mud, you think about if you could touch it, this mud could just fall away and crack and crumble and the drawings would be gone. So how do we know or how do experts think that the cave and the cave system has been able to preserve these these uh, drawings for so many years? So, um, well, number one, apparently it's it's people have not generally been in there. There's not been a lot of traffic. But um, it, it moisture is the key. Um, the fall, the uh, cave, they say, has an intermittent stream that runs out of it. Uh, apparently, sometimes the, the atmosphere in the cavern is, is foggy and damp. And so it just the natural balance of the cave has been stable over the years, and it's never dried out. There's not a rush hour inside the cave system, right, right. what you're telling me. Now, these were, again, found in a cave that right now I think has been called uh, number uh, unnamed cave number 19. It yeah, is in North Alabama. Yeah. We don't know the exact location. And, Lawrence, are they not telling people the exact location because they don't want anybody to mess with it? Uh, that's exactly. And uh, I'll read you something from their report. Uh, now, researchers have been working in this cave for more than 20 years uh it's not exactly secret it is it is on private property it apparently has a a fairly large cave mouth that you can get into and get fairly quickly to this chamber where all these drawings are but uh they say the cavern system as a whole is more than five kilometers long so it goes way 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 back and who knows what else might be up in there but this from the report they say um um, it should be noted that there is a detailed and widely disseminated map of the cave passages available, but we do not show it here as the cave is on private land, completely unprotected and could be easily identified by vandals and looters. So really the only thing keeping this stuff safe is that not a lot of people know where it is. Hey, that sounds uh, sounds too like they're not necessarily trying to change that. And again, for reasons understood. Now, I'm right. going to pull up a couple of these drawings. We're going to talk about them. But Lawrence, as I pull up one of these, before we talk about exactly what it is and exactly what this image is and the breakdown of this, I want you to tell us a little bit about how these researchers and how these experts were able to document this art. Now, we talked about how big it is. Again, not only is it maybe the most uh, Native American cave art, it also might be some of the largest. When you're in a cave, sometimes you can't back up and get the full picture of what is, uh, what's happening and what is on the wall. So tell us a little bit about their process while we look at some of the images. Yeah, so there's one picture you'll find that shows one of the researchers in the, in the room. And what you'll see is a really low ceilinged room with a lot of stalactites hanging down. Um, 
the room, it, the height in there varies from maybe two and a half feet up to four and a half feet, maybe. So you don't have a lot of headroom. And they, like I say, they've been working in there for more than 20 years. They knew there were a lot of these images in there. But in 2017, they went in with a new technique. They, they went in with, um, with cameras and their idea of what they wanted to do was build a 3D computer model of everything that was there. So over a period of two months, they took something like 16,000 high resolution digital photos. Each one was a little piece, each piece overlapped with other pieces. Um, so then they took all these photos and they fed them into computers and special software and it sort of stitched them all together into a panoramic image of the whole thing. And when they did this, what emerged were some big images that you could not take in when you were actually in the room. You couldn't see them all at once. Some of them were very faint, but also they were they were very big. So they tended to, to wrap around obstacles or uh, be situated in such a way that you, if you were actually there, you know, lying on the floor of this cave looking up, you could maybe only see a little piece of them at a time. And, uh, but when they built this computer model, suddenly it's like, oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> and also too, that computer model was able to take some of these drawings, like the one we're looking at from the, the mud glyph as we're, as uh, it's called on the left, you can see it. And then they were able to essentially use that computer to almost trace the image that is on the glyph and then separate it from the rock. Is that right? Yeah, so there, what you're looking at here is on the left is photography of one of the actual glyphs. And by the way, when we say big, we're talking 7 to maybe 12 feet. So most cave art that's been found in, in the country is less than 3 feet or so. This is Some of this is more than twice that big. So it's not huge. It's not like a giant mural on the side of a building or something. But it is, these figures are, are tend to be bigger than than other things that have been discovered. Anyway, left-hand image, you're looking at the actual photography of the uh, tracing on the wall. And then the middle image is where someone has gone in and sort of traced over that to, uh, to create a drawing or a tracing of the image. And then the, on the right, you've got the, the photograph removed so you can see just the image. It's fascinating that, again, these computers and this new technology, even though researchers have been looking at this cave again for decades, it's so interesting that this new technology can be used to really separate that art from the rock and be able to look at the art specifically. Now, I'm going to pull up another kind of similar picture that, again, has the mud glyph and then the art on the other side on the right here. But while I do that, Lawrence, I know that we're all going to play that game of when you look in the clouds and you say that you see a snail in the clouds. This is an interesting topic, though, you and I were just talking about uh, before we got on camera about what this is. To me, this looks like a cup of coffee on a table, like a steaming cup of coffee. <laughs> I don't know that that is something they had at the time. Um, so tell us a little bit about what these drawings and what exactly they might be. It doesn't seem like they're just doodles. Well, so here's an interesting thing. Um, basically, what they say in the paper is that a lot of these images are, they're generally like other Native American pre-Columbian art found in caves uh, or in rock art in the country. But specifically, they just don't know. Um, I'll, I'll read you a, a, a paragraph from their report which is pretty cool. And they call, they call these things anthromorphs. Now that one is a, is a, is a snake. Um, it's a rattlesnake and it is the longest. It's somewhere around, I think 10 to 12 feet long. Um, and, you know, snakes are not an uncommon image in this kind of art, but they call, they call the, the humanoid figures, they call anthromorphs. And they say, as we have not seen their like before, we do not know the identity of these ancient cave art anthropomorphs. Uh, they go on to say they are not recognizable characters from known Native American stories. Um, and so one of the cool things about this is, you know, it's, I mean, if you were in, let's go to a different part of the world. If you, if you were in a cave and you saw a drawing of a guy with a Viking helmet and a big hammer in his hand, you'd go, oh, that's Thor. Um, 
there's nothing like that here. Uh, they, they don't look at these and say, oh, this is so-and-so. This is a story we know. They look at these and say, well, this seems to be a person of importance or a spirit or a, uh, a god of some kind, but we don't know the story. And that's kind of neat. Well, and it is so neat. Again, I'm going to pull up another one. Bear with me while I do uh, work on, on my tech here and pull up a different uh, image as well. But this is just so interesting that these, again, they're not just doodles that somebody took uh, a tool and just were bored and decided to sketch in. These are things that have significance to them just because we don't know the significance. Again, if they are spiritual figures, religious figures in this Native American culture that we don't even know about, it shows how much that we don't know. That's that's a really good point, too. And, and the fact that you can't see all these at once when you're in the cave looking up means that the artist couldn't see the canvas all at once. Right. So they had to conceive of something that was bigger than you could see at one time and, and draw that out. And that that that's kind of sophisticated. <laughs> Absolutely. That's not uh, that's not something that even most artists do today. Most artists pick a canvas that they can see the entire canvas and paint on, uh, whether that is or paint or draw or whichever method you choose. Um, but here's another image again, Lawrence, and we can uh, also tell everybody that they can see these on AL.com in your story. We've linked it here uh, so they can get a better look at some of these photos. I just think they're fascinating and just wanted to pull up a few while we were talking about it. But tell us a little bit about this. This is different than some of those other ones we were looking at that have the the drawings that are uh, kind of taken away from the mud on the side. This is yeah. uh, a grid. Tell us a little bit about it. So, so this is a, a collection of four separate images showing um, four smaller glyphs. These are not the big ones that, that emerged newly in this report, but these are some of the smaller ones they probably knew about before, but it gives you kind of a selection of the imagery. So, uh, in A, what they say you see there in A is a coiled serpent figure with its head in the center of the coil. And that's, that's about two feet across. Um, B is a wasp with its head to the left and its abdomen to the right. Uh, C, they think, is a stylized bird. And D is sort of a human, human figure with, surrounded by swirling lines. It is just these are things that you can just keep looking at. They are fascinating. And again, the uh, the amount of technology that has gone into our understanding of these drawings and understanding of this cave system from the last couple of decades is just incredible. Lawrence, I know that you've been reading this report. What's next for these researchers in this report? I believe that they are from um, the University of Tennessee. So tell us a little bit about that and what they're planning to do next. Yeah, so um First, uh, we should have done should have done this sooner, but let's give credit where credit is due. So the team behind this this research and this paper that just came out is uh, Jan Simek, who is a uh, anthropologist at the University of Tennessee. Stephen Alvarez, who is the founder of the Ancient Art Archive, and that is a really cool website. Uh, just look for Ancient Art Archive online, and you get images, not just from this cave, but from all over the world. And you can actually see some of the, the 3D modeling. They do some neat things with it in some of those images. And then the third person was Alan Kressler, who's an independent researcher based in Atlanta. And they first published this in the journal Antiquity, which is who gave media permission to use these images. So thanks to all them. So in the uh, paper, they don't lay out a lot of specific plans for where they're going next with this. But what they do say is basically, <laughs> hey, you guys, we we use this new technique and we found some new things in this one cave and we need to try this in other caves and see what comes up. So this this could lead to a lot more of this kind of thing. And by way of context, um, the paper also says that in the southeast alone, southeastern North America, there have been uh, 89 other pre-Columbian cave sites with cave art sites identified. So this is one of 90 places, basically, where, you know, you, you could do this and maybe turn up some new results. 
Just fascinating. It seems like this work is far from over. And the question I keep going back to that I would love, uh, I don't know that we'll ever get an answer, but the question I keep coming back to is this unnamed cave number 19. I wonder what the people who drew this art referred to it as. I, I highly doubt it was unnamed cave 19. Right. So maybe one of these days we will know kind of sounds like one of those things we might not ever know but again keeps the mystery alive keeps the history alive and again reminds us that there's so much more here and there is so much more in alabama than what we see today lawrence thank you for all of your reporting here again we're going to link it in the comment thread and again people can see all of these photos and also find links to those reports that you're mentioning and uh, also to the magazines and the scientific papers where the photos and the report and in its full version have been published. So yeah, that, and, again, and there, oh, uh, just say there's there's a lot out there. A lot. This has really made waves in the scientific world. This little little old cave in Alabama, and uh, so there are you know Smithsonian Magazine uh, has a pretty detailed article on it. National Geographic has done a report on it. Science.org. There's there's a lot of information out there. Oh, fascinating. This could be something that you dive into and not come up for days after reading about. So, Lawrence, thank you so much for all of your expertise here. Everybody watching, thank you so much. Have a great Thursday and we'll see you tomorrow.